Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. I always like to start with something interesting. And if you use any of these emojis to anybody under the age of 25, you are officially old. Okay, let's go from five to number one. Okay, and see what your guesses are. Okay, five is the poo emoji. If you use that anytime, you are officially old. Number four is the check mark. Yes, do not use that because, again, you're ancient. Three, guilty. I use it. The okay hand. Yes. Number two is the red heart. Oh, I love the red heart. And finally, number one, the thumbs up. If you use the thumbs up, you are old. Okay, so do not use that anymore. But I don't care. I'm going to still keep using the thumbs up emoji just as much as I want. But speaking of these different Gen Zers and Gen Y and boomers, you know, let's talk about Forrest Gump. Okay, does Forrest Gump belong to Gen X, Gen Y, or Gen Z, or is he a boomer? Okay, which generation does Forrest Gump belong in? Anybody? Anybody? He belongs to Jenna. Get it? Uh, his girlfriend in the movie. Sorry, you didn't get it. And on that happy note, welcome to the Kim Commando Show. It's the nation's largest and most trusted so- show about all things digital. You can find us in over 420 top stations. We're streaming in a favorite radio app of yours. Just search for my last name, Commando. And you can get us as a podcast, as a webcast, all three months worth of archives, commercial free over at getkim.com. And speaking of the Kim Commando Show, say habla espanol. That's right. If you speak Spanish, wherever you get your podcast, you can now find the Kim Commando Show in Spanish. So you might want to pass that along to your Spanish-speaking friends as well. All right, this is part of the show where I like to talk about the numbers behind the tech. And I'm going to start with the story that I read about in the Wall Street Journal this past week about how kids are the number one influencers now. So like, for example, their seven-year-old Anastasia goes by Natasha or Nasta, whatever that is, from Russia. And she has about 100 million strong YouTube followers and a TikTok following about 3 million. Again, she's seven. Of course, there's Ryan's World on YouTube. He's the 10-year-old kid. He's got 32.8 million subscribers, and they say he's making $30 million a year. Hmm, not bad for a 10-year-old. But this story actually focused on Vlad, Nikki, and Diana. And Vlad and Nikki, uh, along with Nastya and the Kids Diana Show, they have nearly 3 million YouTube subscribers. They're making approximately, we can guess, about $100 million a year. Now, with Vlad, Nikki, and Diana, mom and dad are from Russia. They have a 97-foot yacht, Ferraris, Range Rovers, a $13 million house in Miami, all paid for by the kids' videos. And the video that I saw was actually really good. It's definitely not a bunch of amateurs. And these kids are bigger than Mickey Mouse. I mean, it's like romper room meets the Kardashians. Mom comes out and she's pregnant with the fourth kid and with a Range Rover that's full of pink boas. And the two boys are seven and nine. They're trying to figure out how to drive themselves to the store. Bad idea, by the way. But start thinking about this. What is happening in our whole society? I mean, never before in human history have we had so many people recording what they are doing every single day in their lives. And these recordings pretty much amount to nothing. Uh, Number two, age is only a number now thanks to tech. Disney says that they have some brand new technology. It's called the Face Reaging Network, Fran for short. Now, this is why it's so crazy, is that they can make any person just using technology on film, look anywhere from 20 to 80 years old. So the casting calls won't necessarily have to say, we need a 25-year-old guy, we need a 50-year-old guy, because this tech is going to be doing it right there on the film in real time. Who else is losing a job? Special effect makeup artists, because they're not going to have to do all that, because it's going to be happening uh, right there on the videos. I mean, it's just really, it's going to transform Hollywood. So the question is, I started thinking about this when I read it, When do you think we're not going to have any actors and actresses anymore? That it's all just going to be done with technology. I think we're really going to start seeing this big time in about five to ten years. All right, let's move to number three, iPhone 14 production problems and the number 37. The Chinese people are fed up with COVID lockdowns. The riots are happening everywhere. You see it on the news. The Chinese president could be overthrown. In America, we got our own problems, the looming railroad strikes. And how does this all tie in with iPhones and 37? Well, the Ryans aren't just in Chinese cities. At Foxconn, 
that's the vast manufacturing plant, employs 200,000 people. They have a COVID outbreak. It led to what's called closed loop operations, meaning once you're on the plant site, you can't leave. So rioting has been going on. Uh, Foxconn's important. They make another, here's a number for you. They make 70% of Apple's iPhones. So you may be already too late to buy an iPhone 14 for Christmas because delays now are 37 days and counting. So if you have somebody on your list that wants an iPhone 14, if you see one, you should go buy it. Uh, number four, when he's not running Twitter, Elon Musk is trying to run space. I didn't know this. I just read this, that Internet access was declared a basic human right by the United Nations in 2016. But the problem is with satellite Internet access, in order to get everywhere else, it's always been high latency. It's always been really expensive until, of course, Elon Musk came out with Starlink. It's 600 bucks for the gear and $110 a month. And it's different. But here's a number. The venture the Starlink could give 3 billion people who currently do not have internet access a cheap way of getting online. 3 billion. How many satellites do you think that SpaceX has in, the, in, in space right now? How many satellites do you think? Take a guess. Anybody? Uh, as of November 2022, they had 3,271. Here's my last number. How many satellites total is he going to have in space? 42,000. Wow. 42,000. You know, I got an email from somebody the other day and said, hey, you know, Kim, I get your podcasts and I you know, listen to you on radio and all that other good stuff. But are you available on satellite radio? And I said, yes, of course. Are you serious? <laughs> serious. Like, serious XM. All right. Sorry. Uh, and finally, now all these lists are coming out for 2022. So the most Googled celebrities of 2022 have been revealed. And we're going to start at the bottom of the list. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven people on this list. We're going to start at number seven. Will Smith, slap her around the world. Uh, six, Elon Musk. Uh, okay. Five, I have no idea how this guy does it, but Pete Davidson seems to get like the hottest women to go out with him, including Kim Kardashian. Then there's Tom Brady, of course, the divorce. And is he retired or not retired? Uh, Queen Elizabeth. Yes, she had her jubilee, and of course, she passed away in September, which leads us to number two and one, and they are pretty much tied. Anybody care to guess? Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Yes, they are tied for one and two on that list. You know, Amber Heard's net worth is about two and a half million, and she now has to pay Johnny Depp 15 million. So you could say she's going to be forever in debt. All right, coming up, we have five clues that your email has been hacked, and we're going to start with all of your phone calls here on The Kim Commando Show. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And let's get started with Olga. Glad to have you with us. Hi, Kim. Thank you for taking my phone call. You betcha. Um, I wanted to ask you a question regarding um, providing security at home for Internet access for your kids. I have kids that are 9 and 12 years old, okay. and they don't have their own devices, but they're using um, a smart TV and a fire stick at home. And I'd like to be able to monitor not just how much time they're spending on there, but to monitor their content and to try to prevent anything nefarious from getting through. And I was wondering what recommendations you may have about that. Olga, first of all, congratulations. Nine and 12 without a smartphone? You go, girl. I don't know how you did it, but you got it going on. Just say no. (laughs) Just say no. That's all it is. Just say no. But do they whine? Um, not really. They're used to it. <laughs> They're like, gosh, mom, please. All my friends have a phone. Why can't I? Uh, you know, since you mentioned the TV, the, you know, parental controls are built into the TV, right? Uh, and they're in the settings menu and fire. You can also restrict that using the Amazon app. Uh, the thing is, is that if you are tr- truly trying to control the content inside your home, then you have to control it on the router level, right? Makes sense. Anything that comes in, we're going to control it there. And so you have a couple of options there. Um, Disney has something called Meet Circle, which is fabulous. It's great. It works on uh, also on the router level. And then it gives you uh, the reward system, too, so that this way you can say, you know, you did your chores, you got 100 uh, percent, you, you went outside and you got some exercise, whatever it may be, and then you can give them some points. There's um, something that may be a little bit more robust, but if they're not on a device yet, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. There's a brand by the name of uh, Gryphon, 
and they mm-hmm. they have a whole router solution, but it's a whole mesh network solution. So if you needed a new router and the Wi-Fi is crappy at your house and the kids have phones and you really want to lock them down, that's probably what I would recommend. Mm-hmm. But don't forget, you have it on the TV, too. And you, ha- you have it on, the, you know, you have it on the fire stick. So maybe if you start doing that now, one of the things that I will warn you about is that, you know, I'm sure you know this and just I'm just throwing it out there is that, you know, the kids that were locked down the most are the ones that go crazy when they finally get something. So, you know, you know, it's like the kids, they go to college and like they're the ones that are drunk all the time, you know. So you might want to think about getting like a family tablet. OK. And so that this way on the family iPad that you could give it to them from time to time to uh, play a game and to do something fun, something so they don't feel like, oh, gosh, I can't wait till mom's not in the room and then I can use my friend's device or whatever it may be. Just throwing it out there all good. You know, I get it. But you just don't want to have those, you know, you don't want to have that down the road. And thank you so much for your call. Hey, just a reminder, we have that kids tech contract you don't want to ever forget to use with all the little cherubs in your life. That's over at commando.com slash contract. And back to the phones we go with Richard in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Kim. Thank you for taking my call. I um, am wanting to scan in a bunch of old photos. My mother was one of nine from eastern Kentucky, and she has a bunch of photos that I inherited over time from her brothers and sisters, and we're trying to put together a little bit of a genealogical puzzle. Uh, I have a half-brother who was adopted five years before me and has a different father. We're trying to track him down. I'm trying to track information on my father that I've never met. And also my wife and I are kids from the 80s, so we have a bunch of photos on various things, so all kinds of negatives. And we look good in the 80s with our big hair, and so we want to, you know, put some of those up with our family and friends and share them. And, you know, we, we look younger, of course, so we like that as well. Wow. So you got a lot going on. You just spat out in the last 45 seconds, like five or six different stories that I would love to hear more about. It's, uh, yes, it's been, have you, been have you done a any of the, really. Have you done any of the genealogically, like the, the DNA type of tests? I did do Ancestry and my half brother did the other one. Um, so not, not much has popped there. Some older, you know, grandparents. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when my mom went through the adoption, you know, process. She she put information out there on a basic level, but nothing specific. So this actually came about as a mistake by a judge released these records that he wasn't supposed to release. He wanted it secret, but it's been a great thing. I shared it with her before she passed. And I said, I think this is the most amazing thing you've ever done. And I'm so proud of you. And it's chokes me up. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. You know what? It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's because you love that's why you're hurting, because you love. If you didn't love yeah. and you didn't care, you wouldn't hurt. So I'm proud of you. I am for going through all that. And and now you want to share the share more stories, which is even fabulous. And that's why I'm here to help you. So yeah. when we start when when we start talking about slides and negatives and photos, is that there's always the easy way and and the not so easy way, but the easy way is for you to box them all up. And send them off to someplace like Legacy Box or iMemories. And then they will digitize for you. They'll put them on DVDs or CDs or just put them up in the cloud, which is my preference. And then mail you all the materials back. But it does cost money, Richard, right? It does. Yes. So so the other option is for you to, to do it the old DIY way. And the DIY way is that you're going to purchase a relatively inexpensive... Uh, film and slide scanner. And it also does negatives in those old 35 millimeter slides. I don't know if you have any of those laying around, Richard, but those were always fun to deal with too. Because that's, and I don't, for the, those people who don't know what 35 millimeter slides are, it was when Richard and I would walk over train tracks in the middle of the snow and coal we would take <laughs> back to our house. It was, well, maybe not quite those days, right, Richard? Not that quote. No, not that far back. Uh, also, we had. Do um, you ever have any uh, cassette tapes, Richard? Kim, I have them now. I worked in a record store. I saved everything. I have an old 2008 car, and it has a cassette player in it. So I'm living in the 80s. <laughs> living the dream, baby. Living the dream. 
got those mixtapes going on. <laughs> you know, not too yeah. long ago, I was in the studio and the, his name's Frankie and he's about 23 years old. And we were talking about mixtapes and he's, and then finally he looked at me and goes, what's a mixtape? Like, Oh, okay. Think of it as like a playlist, you know, that, but you can only yeah. have eight songs. That was it. All right. So what you're going to buy yourself is for about $136, we're going to shoot you the link, Richard. Uh, okay. A Kodak slide and scan film and slide scanner. It's got a beautiful, large five-inch color LCD screen. It's going to take you some time. So this isn't one of these. Um, if you want it for next Christmas, depend, it sounds like you have everything. Not this Christmas. Next Christmas, <laughs> you're going to start now, okay? Because right. it, it it is a process. And as far as storing all these photos and, you know, Google Photos is always the best Seems like lately because it can give you the ability to share all the photos. People can comment on the photos. And then, of course, a private Facebook group is always fun to share all these photos with, too. So, Richard, hang on the line. We're going to send you that link to the Kodak scanner. And for those of you who are looking for it, we'll post the link over at commando.com. Hey, as you're traveling about this holiday season, don't forget about Google's photo scan. And if you ever see photos on a wall inside picture frames, you can always just snap it. it does a terrific job. Stay right where you are. More of the show is coming up. All right, coming up in just a few minutes, we've got some travel tips, some tech travel tips, and also some clues that your email has been hacked. And right now, joining us here on the Kim Commando Show and Kim Commando today is our amazing content queen, Ali Seligman. Hello there, Ali. Hi, Kim. So how are, are you all done with your Christmas shopping? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Not even okay. close. Are you? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I, was, no. I was worried that I but was the I only one tell, behind. But I will tell you what I, I've got Barry. Okay, because he has a brand new bar in the new house. Okay. So I got him a robotic, like, bartender. So you, <gasps> he can put in, like, his gin and and tonic and stuff. And then this cup goes up and it, like, shh, 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 oh. and, like, it makes a drink. And, like, goes, like, like, on a little conveyor belt. And so I showed it to him and I said, and I said, you know, because Ian's 21. Yeah. So I couched it like this. I said, so... You know, if I buy this for Ian, am I being like a bad mother promoting <laughs> like alcoholism to a guy in college? Or do you just think it's like a great idea? And he looked at me and he goes, that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <gasps> oh, <laughs> but I already womp ordered womp. it. <laughs> so You know what? Once it makes him his first gin and tonic, he'll think he'll think different. Yes. Yeah. All right. I think you will. So what are we talking about today? Well, you know, if you are listening, I bet that you might be one of the people in you might be the person that everyone in your life comes to you and says, uh, can you help me fix my computer, my phone? So annoying. This is going so wrong. Annoying. This is going wrong. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, everybody's going to be with their families for the holidays. And so it, it's probably the time when you're going to get even more of that. Can you fix this? Can you fix that? And I say this year, instead of being annoyed by it, you go a step further and you do a little bit to help out your relatives, you know, the people who aren't, who aren't as tech savvy, because then there's going to be less they have to bother you for in the coming year. So it's really a gift for everyone. <laughs> That's right. It's like a preemptive strike. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I thought we could go over a few simple things you can do to make everyone's lives easier. Okay. First, uh, the perennial favorite, Wi-Fi problems. We get so many emails, right? You get this all the time, Kim. My Wi-Fi spotty. Yeah. It's slow. What do I do? Okay. First, you're going to start with updating their router. They've probably never done it if they're not very tech that's savvy. True. Yeah. So that's important. And if it's really old, it might be time to upgrade the router because that can be a big reason why the Wi-Fi isn't very good. If you were thinking, I don't even know how to pick my own router. How am I going to pick one for my parents or my grandparents or whatever? Lucky you, we have a router finder quiz on commando.com that makes it really easy. You just have to answer a few questions. How big is the house? How many devices? All that fun stuff. Um, if the router isn't that old, check where it is. If it's hidden on, you know, the floor of a closet, it's not doing any favors <laughs> for their signal. It's full of, yeah, dust bunnies. It's hot. Yes. You know, it's, it's just a bad, bad thing. It is. Yeah. So you're going to want to get it higher up in a central area of the house where, you know, most of the activity is happening. Don't put it next to the microwave. Uh, or if they have cordless phones, those are known to cause a lot of interference. Okay. Another boring but necessary updates. If they don't update their phone, if they don't update their computer, things are not going to be good. Um, so go through, check that those things are up to date. Yeah, you should ask them first. You know, you're you're going to talk to them about this, right? Hey, let's do a little tune-up on your tech. So it's not like you're just uh, taking their well, phone. You know what? 
just when you started talking about that, I started thinking like, you know what, I would not even approach any of this <laughs> unless I had at least one glass of wine. I mean, just because it's not going to be fun. It won't and be so, fun. But luckily, this, no, most of this not. stuff goes pretty fast. Um, one that is a little tricky if they tell you, hey, my phone is being weird. My computer's being weird. And usually that's that's how people say it, right? There's just something off and they're not really sure what it is. It could be a lot of things. It could be that they clicked a weird link. It could be that they downloaded an app that has, you know, some kind of malware in it. it could be any kind of wear. Luckily on a phone, it's pretty easy. A good old fashioned factory reset will get most of the junk out of there. Um, so that is an option. Make sure you back up the phone first so that they don't lose any of their photos, their texts, all that kind of stuff. If it's a computer, that's a little bit more difficult. We do have steps over on commander.com to get malware off of a computer. I do have an idea, though, if you are thinking, I can't take that on myself um, in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's something where that is so frustrating. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we've all been there. And then sometimes when you go to update something, it breaks something else. Right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> or, they, or they say, you know what? I, I don't like what happened because I used to have a button mm, that did that. Mm -hmm. And you do that and now the button's gone. <laughs> or... Or you you update it and my font is now a different size. And, you know, it's just, it's hard. This is like a really a difficult task. But it's, it's and it's a difficult ask, but we could do it, right? I think we, we are, can. We do it. Okay, here's yeah. one that is going to make anybody in your life who has ignored this really happy. Help them check what subscriptions they're paying for on their phone. Because it's so easy to sign up for these, you know, it's two bucks, it's five bucks, whatever. Sometimes it's ten bucks. And you don't realize month after month that money is coming out of your account. Uh, it's actually really easy to check this on an iPhone and an Android. You can see it all in one place as a list what exactly you're paying for. So help them find this list and show them, hey, why are you spending 20 okay. bucks on apps? All right. Now, okay, this is so ironic that you <laughs> were talking about this right now because I did not you were, know you were going to mention this. I got an email this morning from a guy who went on his dad's phone. Yeah. Okay. To, and and was looking around because his father said that it was acting weird. <laughs> so he went into the subscriptions and he found that his 80 year old dad has subscribed to three porno sites. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So his question to me was, do I just remove them? <laughs> Okay, or do I say, hey, Dad, you know, you're 80, and I get that, and I'm sure it's okay with you, but do you need three? I have the most okay. world's most awkward conversation with his dad, yeah. So what would you do? Oh, I would, I would, just, I would get rid of them because he's never going to say anything to you. <laughs> he's never going to say anything <laughs> to you about it. And it could be sometimes these apps do have malicious code in them that That's then true. downloads other things. So... In all likelihood, yeah, dad signed up for these. Um, but no, he doesn't need three. He'll just go back and subscribe to the, the one he likes best. <laughs> or you could just or tell dad where the free one is. Okay, We all know <laughs> where it go. is. Okay, so just go to the free one. Merry That's Christmas, dad. Okay, and finally on my list, setting up new devices. I am a firm believer that if you are giving a tech gift to someone, especially if they're not very tech savvy, it is not complete unless you help them set it up. Um, I know from experience, I bought my dad a nice Bluetooth speaker, and then weeks and weeks later, saw it sitting on the kitchen table because he just didn't know how to set it up, so I did it for him. So this is my, you know, nice tip for you and your family. If you give tech, help them set it up. Now, what if you're far away and you can't help them? That is where the shameless plug comes in. Okay, if you, I'm sure you've heard Kim talk about Get Kim's Help. Now, this is a place where you can go. If you search tech support or tell your family, oh, yeah, just Google how to do it, no, mm. no. They're going to end up either on a weird website, they're going to end up following instructions that they just don't know how to do. So give them the gift of someone who can actually walk them through the process and set something up for them. You know, it's reliable. If you're not going to end up with something weird on your computer that's going to be watching them all the time, just one time, they'll help them figure out what it is. And they'll even do device setup. I ask them, hey, would you guys help? you know, set up an echo, maybe help people set up routines. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We can do that. So they can go as far as you want them to go. Um, it's really great. And most issues they fix in about 10 minutes. And if they don't fix it, the best part is you don't have to pay anything. So it's great. And these, yeah. And these are, they, these are patient people. Yeah. <laughs> these are great guys they, and gals, by the way. 
And so if you don't want to fix your parents' computer and you don't want to go there to do any of this, you don't want to have that awkward conversation with your dad about three porn sites <laughs> that he subscribed to, uh, just send them to getkimshelp.com. Once again, that's getkimshelp.com. So, Allie... Are you going to put all this on the website? I am going to put it on the site. We also have, so this weekend uh, for your tech tip, Kim, you actually wrote about a few things that you can do on your own phone or someone else's phone to give it a little tune-up. They're not going to be as in-depth as some of these. They're going to be things that you can just knock out really quick, you know, making sure that they have emergency contacts set up, their health app, all that kind of stuff. So check out the website. We'll give you some good things to do, and your family will be very thankful. And Allie, as always, you are truly our amazing content queen, and I'm so proud of you because I'll tell you, you're doing just really fantastic job on air, on site, in the newsletters, and all of the traffic indicators are all saying what a truly amazing person you are, and um, and I appreciate you, so I wanted to let you know. Thank you, Kim. All right. Let's talk about clues that your email has been hacked. I actually sent this off to my friend Anita this morning because her email was hacked by somebody in India. So what you want to do is, number one, is you want to look at your sent and draft folders for any emails that you didn't write or send and see if there's something in there. Uh, Number two, you might get some notifications that you changed a password. Again, somebody could be in there. And then look at your emails on your inbox. Do they show red and you've never even looked at them? Mm, That's another red flag. Look in the trash for any emails that you might not have put there. And then finally, most email services will let you see exactly where you logged in, when, and what day. And we have the list and links that you might need over at commando.com. Just hit commando.com, and then there's a link that says Kim Show. All right, still to come, we have some terrific tech travel tips that you don't want to miss. And, of course, we have more of your great phone calls here on the Kim Commando Show. Over at the website, we have an Amazon gift card contest going on. Just head over to commando.com slash win, and you could win that gift card. And the secret phrase is robotics. That's right, robotics. And you should do that now because I'll tell you, we're giving it away in just a few days. That's commando.com slash win. All right, Nancy in Parker, Arizona, glad to have you with us. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Kim. How's it going today? Doing great. Doing great. So what's going on in Parker, Arizona? Well, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's a, it's a little uh, cool because it's windy, but that's the way I like it because I'm from the north, so it's all good. The sun, is, the sun is beautiful on the palm trees and the river, and it's great. Wow. You know, that is a beautiful part of our state, isn't it? Sure, sure. It is. is. It is. All right. Thank you so, so much, I... Kim, for uh, sharing your, your research and skills with everybody and your tech tips. I signed up for your little email thing, and I've already gotten a couple of good things. Awesome. Awesome. So what's going on today? I can lend a hand to. Well, this summer, I think it was an email you read on a tech tip in uh, like during the Hugh Hewitt show. And this fella asked about a phone that was not a smartphone. He just wanted a basic phone to get away from all the ads and, and other rigmarole that I'm getting on my Android because it runs on a Chrome uh, platform sure. and it's getting very annoying. <laughs> I like the way you say annoying. You're so happy until you say, and it's very annoying. This is annoying. Okay. It's like, okay. So we're just going to get this right straight at the get go here, Nancy. Okay. I'm your friend. I never want to be your enemy because I have a feeling that it'd be like, she's so annoying. Okay. That's not good. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> So there is a push, a movement right now, because people are sick and tired of phones. I mean, they just, they beep. Uh, You get notifications. There's distractions. You've got your social media and your games and everything else. And so what I was talking about is that somebody called in, they said they just want a phone, right? They just want a Mm -hmm. phone. I just just want to be able to, believe it or not, make a phone call, okay, Mm -hmm. And, and get a voicemail. Uh, you know, and maybe um, maybe send a text message or two, but I don't want it loaded down and taking over my life. So there's a product called the Light Phone, and that's light, like light bright, L-I-G-H-T. Uh, okay. It's a 4G LTE cell phone, and it does require a SIM card, of course. It works on its own network as well as T-Mobile and Verizon and AT&T and I think Ting and a few others. 
Uh, so you sign up, you buy it, and there's always like a two or three week delay between you getting the phone. And the phone's price $250. Now, let me tell you something. There's no color screen. Uh, pretty basic as far as functionality. You can uh, take phone calls, messages. There's an alarm. You can add other things to it if you wanted to, like podcast players. But really, the the light phone is made for folks that are want their privacy back. Because let's face mm -hmm. it, you know, if you have uh, you have an iPhone or if you've got a Samsung or whatever it may be, your Google Pixel and Huawei and which they just got banned, by the way, from the United States. So I shouldn't say mm -hmm. that. Uh, or whatever the brand may be, is that there's all this data tracking. So the whole concept behind the light phone is that it will never have any social media. It'll never allow you to browse the web. Don't even think about sending and receiving email or reading the news or getting any ads or targeted advertising. So in case you're interested, it's over at thelightphone.com and it's about 250 bucks. Nancy, thank you for your call today. Hey, it's brand new. I'm excited to tell you about is that now you can listen to the Kim Commando Show in Spanish. That's right. So wherever you get your podcast, just search for Kim Commando Show en Español. Kim Commando Show en Español. All right. If you're traveling for the holidays, here are five tech tips to make things easier. Number one, before you leave home, I want you to unplug all your computers, your gaming consoles to protect against any power surges. Next, get a few smart plugs. Plug a lamp into a smart plug. Then you can control it from an app on your phone. You can have the lights come on a schedule when you're not home. Uh, three, worst case scenario, you may lose your wallet. So what I want you to do is have photos of all your important documents with you. Just take them on your phone. Uh, four, Apple AirTags, tile trackers. If you're on Android or your travel bodies, just put them anywhere you want them to be, in your luggage, your phone, on your attached to your phone, on your laptop bag, backpack, and more. And finally, if you've never used an airline's app with digital boarding passes, oh, you're missing out. You also get real-time alerts on gate changes, flight delays, any cancellations, and relax. Take a deep breath. The holidays only come once a year. Hey, thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening.